a metaphor of a bat. <laughs> do we do we want to just shorten it to Jesse's thing? Jesse's thing. Short about it. Got it going on. <laughs> or do do we want to say Jesse and his thing? Jesse's thing. He's got, he's got it going, it going on. <laughs> Not the remix of Jesse's mom. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse's mom. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> hey, community. Here's what's brewing today. Woo, it's Jesse Williams. Thank. Ask it, Auntie. Fiscal responsibility. And House Us Down, Beyonce. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Hey, hey, it's Auntie Carell from Minority Report. Thanks for joining us today. I switched it up today. <laughs> Okay, well, this is Auntie Dwan. <laughs> and this is Auntie Jarrell from Minority Report. And I'm also <laughs> grateful that you're joining us today. Exactly. I guess I might, as well I might as well chime in in this grateful fest and say that I'm grateful that both of y'all are grateful to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everyone's doing okay today. You know, get my little uh, NPR voice today. Um, mm, so how are you okay. aunties doing this morning, this afternoon, this evening? Well, these thighs ain't gonna have no EPR voice, okay? No, <laughs> the thighs thundering. Oh, look! We I know we talked on. about it last week. I know we talked about it last week. We but... had to check in on her thighs, girl. Girl, she don't gotta wear band aids no more. So that's you know that's a that's great, a you know, that's a plus. We're healing, we healing, you know. <laughs> but I honestly, I was telling the aunties, I went to the gym at six thirty this morning. And I forgot to put on my my tights, my spandex, and itch. I tried to squat. I said, mm -mm, "Nope, they rubbing." Mm -mm, no, I was walking. I was like, "What is this?" No, mm -mm, don't like it. Like, just the material just bunching up between material my thighs, <laughs> like underneath my balls, just don't feel right. So, yeah. wait, what kind of underwear were you wearing this morning? Um, just some briefs. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so I guess you know the briefs ain't supporting like they should. So the spandex <laughs> just you know just keep them right up here against me. <laughs> stuck. So right, girl, right like, there, right in the chest. Come right on, right here. You know. <laughs> well, it sounds like you got a lot of underwear you gotta get rid of. Maybe the community wants to buy do. some. I need to show. show. You mm. know, there's a whole. I'm about to say uh, go to OnlyFans. Look, we just. <laughs> Get the ah. coins. You think I'm playing. Uh. <laughs> you might be able to retire, bitch. Girl, <laughs> these bands be be buying up them underwear, sniffing them in their face. Uh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh, Downey Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. But uh, community, hopefully you're doing well. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the, the bell button if you're watching on YouTube. If you haven't shared this to any of your friends, if you're keeping us a secret, you don't got to keep us a secret. Share the well. No. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. tell everybody. Tell everybody. Share everybody. Say we your favorite podcast mm -hmm. out there. Let the world know. We trying to grow some more. <laughs> yeah. I Speaking of secrets, I, um, I started watching this new TV show on MTV called My Secret Relationship. Oh, God. What? Oh, wait. Don't get me hooked. What's this about? Let me say, Girl, don't give me a tell me about it. <laughs> the first <Right>. episode. <laughs> <laughs> the first episode that I watched, anyways, because I, I don't know if I'm mid season or whatever. I think I think it's like episode three or four or something like that. But the first first episode that I watched, I'm like, this is just gonna be something just for you know for background just for or whatever. Me. No, just background, just oh. background. It's just like, you know, not, nothing to be invested in or whatever. But, you know, I like me a little catfish. I like me a little, you know, spicy drama or whatever. Ew. And when I say I screamed, <laughs> really? 
at the secrets and <laughs> no and. <laughs> that's all I see. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to be an OG to get that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this going two episodes That was last back. week, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's shoot. how I see you screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked, gooped, gaggled. I, and for yeah, you to be so, shocked because you've seen like every iteration of like these kind of shows. Basically, so for you yeah. to still be shocked by some, there must be some shit. Yes. So now you <laughs> yes, got I, me intrigued. Because like I am because because here's the thing: when you say my secret relationship, that's basically the premise of it is is one person calls the show because the person that they're with are hiding them. They're not posting them on their socials. They haven't mm. met any of their family. Da 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 da. So naturally, what you think the obvious of it is is they're cheating. Right. Now I only saw one episode. Okay, but it was good enough for you to want to watch the rest. <laughs> I'm like, I, look, oh, I, you know what I'm going to be doing right after this, right after we wrap this up, because I got I got two episodes that were on, on the said, DVR. Okay. <laughs> wrap the shit up. <laughs> watch your hands. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. <laughs> Why you um, saying that? I'm already taking everything off. The right. <laughs> <laughs> she got the extension cord and everything. Like, bitch, we got this bitch. Oh my god! Well, we can't uh, get out of here without talking about Jesse Williams, bitch. Hey, okay, so when I text y'all, had y'all already seen it on Twitter? I had already known for like a month because Mike Vasquez, hey Mike Vasquez, have been in the DM saying y'all need to go see this. I don't even know the name of the damn play. I call it the Jesse Williams play. <laughs> what was the <laughs> play? Take me Take out. Take me out. Take me out. There we go. <laughs> um, and he's like, he's like, girl, we went and saw it, and he's like, Jesse Williams got a big old thing. I was like, okay, cool. You know, cute. He's cute as shit. As, as maybe I'll get up there, and kind of you know one of those things you're just like okay whatever put it in the back of your mind whatever but then the world saw it <laughs> and then i saw it i said bah, 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 bah. broadway.com let me, let me tell you <laughs> let me tell y'all community so i sent a t- i sent a twitter post to the group and i instantly crept duan I could be there in 1.5 hours. Are we trying to go see this? The, the, the train station is right by my job. We out. <laughs> Check your personal message. Just exclude me through Auntie Jarrell out there. I'm going straight to the, what we doing? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well. There is okay. no lie in that statement. <laughs> look, 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 first of all, Corell was like, Duan, you want to go tonight? And I said, let's do it. <laughs> Then he got quiet, and cause and like cause during the day, Dewan has his phone like on the silence mode, and so I was like, oh shit, like these and the, the tickets were starting to go quick. Like I would like click a couple of them and be like, oh, these seats are no longer here. And I'm like, shit, the whole world trying to see his thing and thing and thing. So I was like, oh my god, I was like, okay. So at first I called Corey. I was like, Corey, and this is like literally like 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Corey, do you want to go to New York? If so. Hop in the shower, meet me at the station, park your car in the garage, and we're going to hop in the train, and we'll get DeJuan and Adam to go. And he's like, uh, and he was like, slow poking around, hemming and hawing. I was like, never mind, I'm going. Nah, I'm going. <laughs> so I'm like, it's taking too long to decide. I need to get these tickets, and I need to, like, get in the train station. So I'm texting. So that's when in the group, I was like, okay, Dewan, check your personal. Because he wasn't responding. I was like, oh, shit. Should I get these tickets said, or no? You got, your, you got your phone on silence, girl. Check your messages. Alma, Alma, Alma. check your battery. <laughs> now, Alma, to be clear, to be clear, and I think I've shared this on the podcast before, not a big surprise, but yeah. most of my day, I'm in meetings. Yes. Yeah. I'm in between yeah. 9 to 13 meetings a day. Yeah. And at this point, I have been in back-to-back meetings since 7.30 in the morning. Those days a bitch hadn't even taken a shower yet. <laughs> so I looked at my phone as I'm walking, literally walking over from where I'm taking my Zoom calls, which is right here in the living room, over to get, because I'm like, bitch got to wash that ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> wash your hands, wash your legs, wash that ass. We live that life. And, <laughs> and so, in the, so in the midst of me getting up, I see the text message 
And I'm and he's like, you want to go? I'm like, done. I'm in. And that's it. <laughs> Hop in the shower. Phone blowing up. <laughs> Like I thought this was decided. Like, <laughs> well, because I, I what, what is, I didn't know if Adam wanted to go, so I was like, okay, should I get three or do I get two? So then I'm texting Adam. I'm like, Adam, you want to go? Da, 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 da. And so Adam's like, I'm down. <laughs> so bitch, went and got three seats, and then Adam's like, you know, we gotta get good seats. We ain't about to sit in the balcony. I was like, you right, boo, you right. <laughs> so got the three tickets, bitch. Tell tell me why this journey to New York. <laughs> Well, hold on one second, struggle. because <laughs> I get out of the shower. As soon as I cut the shower off, Adam's like, uh, so I guess we go into that show tonight, huh? And I hadn't even said anything to him. So I'm like, it's like, bitch, how you know? How the hell you know? How the hell you find out about, bitch, I was about ready. this? Bitch, I was ready. <laughs> and so, and then I felt bad. Jerome was like, well, yeah, well, damn, FOMO. <laughs> I'm like, I but you know, know I, I know. but you know, real talk though, I felt good because like, I told you I was because I said in the groups, I said, Dewan, Minority Report needs to be live from the from the theater, Period. okay? <laughs> Look, we need to be live. <laughs> so I already knew I was Ooh. like, uh, we need to be in the building. So I'm, and, I'm and, living through at this point. <laughs> and honestly, the only reason it was that urgent was because I tried to look at like the weekend dates and everything, and everything was sold out, or it was either sold out or it was like the way back. I was like, no, I'm trying to see that thing up close. So. <laughs> And wait, for those who are living in Iraq, I'm assuming everybody knows what we're talking about. If Jesse not. Williams, right. <laughs> just Twitter, just type in Jesse Williams on Twitter. You you'll find out real even quick. till this day. This is at, this is like a week afterwards. Exactly. Still type in that shit, still Jesse trending. Williams. Mm-hmm. But um and Jesse Williams mm-hmm. is from Grey's Anatomy fame and things like that. So just fucking cute from the get-go. Not anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. You're right. <laughs> But so like you're not known for that. So we get the tickets and all that shit. And literally I work by the the the, the train station. So I hop on the train and I get to so I have to transfer in Trenton to get to the like the New Jersey Pike or whatever. Get there two minutes, two or three minutes late for the train that's going to New York because my train ended up being late. So I'm like, fuck. Okay, what do I do? So I literally get to that station, run to the Amtrak station buy another ticket to get on Amtrak (laughs) to go into the city and end up like getting there. And so I missed like maybe the first 10 minutes of the show. So I'm like huffing and puffing, running through like New York. Well, I know I wasn't running. I was speed walking because a bitch ain't running nowhere. I ain't going to tell that tale. Uh, (laughs) And so like I'm texting them, Dewan and Adam saying, oh, like don't make fun of me when I'm sweating through my shirt. But you got to lock your phone up. So they're not seeing the text and things like that at all. So they didn't even know I had made it. <laughs> yeah, we, when you get there, I mean, ever since that thing leaked, like, I don't know what kind of Fort Knox, uh, <laughs> like cybersecurity uh, team that they got working they over there in, today, in Times not. Square, but <laughs> they locked everything down so basically you show up with either your tickets on your phone or you know in your hand however you get them and we had you know tickets in our on our phone mm-hmm. so then there's two separate lines to get in so i don't know even know if you know this <laughs> how this no. worked or whatever because you was late was but late. but yeah so there was two lines or whatever and um and we got in the line and they they confirmed the tickets and then once they confirm your tickets, they could see that there were three tickets that were attached to this one. So, you know, we knew that and they were like, well, where's your third person? So like, well, you know, they're on the train. They'll come, she whenever they come or whatever, but we here, <laughs> we here. So, um, so then they, so then they write down on a piece of paper, your seat assignment and give you this little piece of paper. And then they tell you to turn your phone off. Okay. And then you walk a little bit further and then they have another person ch- show me your phone. Is it off? Yep. And then there's another person, show me your phone. Is it off? And then that fourth person, show me your phone. Is it off? <laughs> now you're in the building. <clears throat> this is just going through the line. So now you're in the building and then they take your turned off phone, or even if it's not turned off and they put it in a, a sleeve yeah. that is magnet that not even magnetized it's like surgically sealed (laughs) with a device so that you are not able to like open it up at all so literally from the point that you confirm that you're going to see this show 
you ain't talking to nobody. Nope. You ain't taking no pictures. You ain't getting no text messages because all that shit is locked up in this this vacuum sealed um, <laughs> <Dave Chappelle pouch. laughs> TSA approved <laughs> right, right pouch. And and that's it. So and we got there like maybe a half an hour early. So you know when you get to a show or anything early, you're just on your phone, like you know yeah, playing yeah. games, text message, whatever. We we just gotta sit there. So we're just <laughs> we're sitting there, you know, like looking back to see if Corel gonna make it. Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? Oh, and then we're like, well, damn. Well, when does this thing start? Because we have no barometer for time anymore yeah. because we ain't got our phones, and the only kind of entertainment we got is just looking around or looking in the leaflet. And trying to, the, look, you know, the, trying to look around that curtain to see see the thing it thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I got okay, this. So, so the place started at seven. Go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say I, I'm ready to hear about the thing it thing. Okay. I'm just like, look. <laughs> so so I get there. So like I get there, and clearly, obviously, Broadway is just hella gay. It was extra hella gay that night, though. But even like the person that had the door, so I rushed up, and she was a drag queen, clearly, because she had the nails on, she had the half eyebrows. I was like, hey, what's up, boo? <laughs> And she's like, Jesse Tyler Ferguson won't be here tonight, just to let you know. I was like, who that? Like, we ain't looking for him. We looking for Jesse Williams. <laughs> she's like, you know what? That's what everybody keeps saying tonight. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> so like the one said, you put your phone in, da, 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 da. And so since I was late, I got there at like 7.15. The show started at 7. And so in my mind, I'm like, damn, I, I better not have been like the opening thing. I'm going to be pissed. And so... <laughs> Like the the one lady was like, well, you're gonna have to go up to the 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 the, the top level, the balcony, since you're late. But then there's this gay guy. And I was like, oh, do I really like? Can I? Is like, is there a seat in the back? And he's like, come here. And he looked in and he's like, okay, just sit right there in the back. So I was like, thank you, thank you, because I got a CC. <laughs> mm -hmm. And literally, I sit down. And the first thing I see is a dude coming from the side, screen, naked. I was like, yes, this is my type of play. <laughs> And so literally from jump, because it's a locker room, they're in the locker room and stuff like that. So it's not just Jesse naked. The whole cast throughout the show. All of them naked? All yes, of bitch, them. Multiple times. All of them. <laughs> All of them. Multiple times. Yes. And, they, and they're good looking men too. So you're and, just like, oh. And, 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 and yes, the, all the things were thanging. Thing, thing, thing. All there was of maybe the one cast thing member that the thing wasn't like the thing was like a normal well, thing. There, there, well, technically there was two. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 we, we, won't, we won't say no names. <laughs> <laughs> say their names. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, there was two. There was two. There was you're two. Right. You're right. right. But the right. other cast members, I was like, oh, I wasn't ready for the rest of the cast to be hanging, oh. thinking, and looking. Even good. the Japanese guy, honey, he could oh, get it. That could get it. <laughs> <laughs> then speak Damn. a lick of English in the show. <laughs> just, I was like, sit on my face. Like, Thank you. Oh, damn. That, that thing just slapped. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> literally that's what I sat down to. I was like, oh, shit. So already in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, did I already miss the scene, though? Because if this is, like, already it, fuck. So, like, you go through the play or whatever. And then, and then, did you catch it? Jesse almost did, like, a little tease because he got naked early in the, the, the show. But he kind of like showed his, like he kind of bent over, showed his ass, and then kind of wrapped the towel so you couldn't really see it yet. So he was like teasing us. <laughs> and it's just a hella gay crowd. So I got like these gay men next to me and they're like ooh and an eye and shit. Um, so then it gets an intermission and we haven't seen the thing a thing yet. So I'm like, okay, okay, either I missed it. Oh, it's coming. Or, or it's coming. So, like, finally the intermission comes. And I, it's going to be coming. Right. So, I finally get to see, like, DeJuan give him a hug, give Adam a hug, and things like that. And I'm like, did I miss it? They're like, no, it hasn't come yet. I'm like, woo, woo, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm trying to even think how it led up. So, like, the, the I will say for the play, the second half of the play, I, and DeJuan and I kind of talked about this last night, second half of the play is better than the first half of the play. The overall play is fine. It's, it's a good play. It, you know, eh, you know, but that's not what we was there for. Hey, facts. So then they get all naked again, and they in this shower scene. It's just like all the plethora of men's is up there just naked. All of Ooh. them. It's like they everyone walk else out in just... the cast <clears throat> except the 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 manager guy the, and Jesse. the business manager and the <laughs> and the coach. So you're just like, damn, when are we gonna see Jesse? <laughs> and then the scene comes. <laughs> The lights get low. Well, first of all, hold on. Uh, Wait a uh -huh. minute. Because <laughs> all of the players came out. So you got to see all of the players 
all different shades and colors and sizes and all of that stuff. And they're literally taking a shower, shower. in front of us. Like, yeah. you know, like rubbing their balls, washing between their lips, all of that. And they're turning around, you know, they're like, it's not like they're being shy about everything. Like they, mm-hmm. and I think, I think I said to Carol, I think they use those little hand warmers you know, that you use in the wintertime that you put in your gloves, oh, yeah. you know, to make sure that things are no. real extra loose <laughs> because every everybody was hanging at their best. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then at the end of the shower scene, <laughs> you see a little <laughs> you know, we saw a little, just a that, little. Right, that one dude might have been he had a little a halfy going <laughs> he did yeah, he did yeah he did Cause like, cause on the you right know when it's hang and hang different but then when it kind of get like a little halfy it's a little <laughs> stiff but it's like right. it's like that because and the thing of it is is that you know when you take a shower at least you know, as men, we take a shower and the water runs off you and, yeah. you know, your dick is just loose or whatever. It it generally runs down. Well, his yeah, was running run at like right a 25 out. degree <laughs> angle. <laughs> Come on, man. So they're taking a shower. They're taking a shower. The shower is behind them and they're all facing us. So you just seeing everything. Yeah. And the one on, on the right, it was kind of like, it was, and everybody else's stream was going down. So, you know, he, he needed a little assistance. Uh, and <laughs> to it's make funny, sure he I was watched, showing uh, at his best. I watched, watch what happens live just to see the Jesse interview because he just did it a few days ago. And the, the bartenders on it were the rest of the cast. And Andy asked him, do you fluff yourself before you get out there? And they're like, yeah, you know, you got to do a little something. And he's like, the the guy that had the the semi chimed in and he goes, well, you know, but you got to be careful because you don't want to get too, too riled up and too whatever. And it was funny because I was like, bitch, you was the one that was a little riled up on stage. A little riled up, a little too much. Right. (laughs) But uh, but so you get to that scene, you're like, damn, these dudes just naked all throughout the show. This is dope. But where's Jesse? Honey. Because it's everybody but Jesse at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and then it gets to the Jesse scene. And, and the funny thing is, it's like a serious scene. <laughs> like the whole setup, like the, the, the play is like a serious matter. But he, that bitch came out and he had the towel on. The, the showers came back down. One dude was in there, his thing wasn't thangin' thangin', but whatever it is, what it is. We wasn't checking for him, no way. Jesse, come on, got that towel, hung that towel up, honey. The whole place gasped. Like, the air just sucked all the way out. Showed it. Showed it. it. And it it was thangin'. It was, it was, was what you see, what you see see is what you get. It's a pretty penis. Yeah, it's a pretty penis. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. out, girl. Clean, clean yeah. your mouth a little bit, girl. Clean the side of your mouth oh, a little bit, girl. girl. Jesse, this is a good be cl- Jesse, we love you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was banging. Banging. The thing, the thing that I keep like thinking about is. This is the best kept secret in Hollywood for Holy a long ass know. time because I mean think about it Jesse has is obviously he's physically attractive but he's also like like mentally like just yep. when you see him speaking at award shows mm-hmm. and he's just so um elegant. I'm not going to use elegant yes mm-hmm. I I I'll use that but yeah. you know he's he's just she's so um his speeches or his, you know, the way that he's presenting himself is so different than everyone else because there's always a message behind yes. it. It's it's yes. almost like he's giving, you know, a public speaking yes. engagement versus taking a. He cares you know, he's what he's really saying. He knows absolutely. he has a platform. Mm-hmm. And in the play, his character is gay, yeah. and the premise is that on this baseball team, um, you know, he has decided to publicly announce that he's gay. Right. He's the most valuable player on this team, the most highly played, highly paid player on this team. And, you know, at the height of his career, he announces that he's gay. So the play happens at different intervals before and after, you know, him, you know, having this revelation and him coming coming out wasn't really they didn't even show that part of him like coming out. But 
you know, it was, it was always being referred to. Yeah. And so people were talking about him and his character, you know, as if, well, we'll see if, we'll see if, you know, see how this plays itself out because usually, you know, people who are part of that lifestyle have all these kind of, you know, things happen to them. And the whole premise of his character was that he was just one of those very few people. I think there was a line in the, in the show where, where he was like, there's four people every, every epoch <laughs> or yeah, every yeah, century yeah. that don't experience being discriminated against or whatever, even though he was, you know, mixed race, right. gay, you know, da 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 in in, in baseball, da 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 da. Call him the Greek god. Mm -hmm. And we see why. <laughs> yeah. Honey, yeah. like it, it, yeah, but honestly, the, the play, I don't can't, can't give a damn about the play. <laughs> I hopped on that train, planes and automobiles, and running through Manhattan <laughs> to see that thing, and it lived up to the thing. And, and the funny cross, thing is, like, she other, across two state lines, three bitch, state lines, honey, <laughs> bought multiple here, tickets I didn't even season. use for the train because I missed the train <laughs> <laughs> to get my ass there. But it, it was funny because yeah. <laughs> last week's episode, community, we're talking about like the Ashy aunties about like, does your dick size matter and all this shit? And then here we, we're like, no, it's the, the motion in the ocean and being happy with your body type and this and that. And then the following week, we're like, bitch, did you see his big ass dick? <laughs> <laughs> no, cross two state lines to go see that shit. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, when an opportunity is. when an opportunity arises, Literally, so these legs. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, like, like, uh, yeah, it's the best kept secret in Hollywood because he's very attractive. The body is oddied. The thing is thanging, and he's smart. And he cares he for his platform, his yeah. personality. Like, damn. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this dude, dear Jesus. Woo. I mean, honestly, with with without the gay part, there are a lot of actual similarities between who he is in real life yeah. and the character that the he character. was playing in this actual film. The character was very highly principled, you know, very, um, you know, very uh, concerned about how um the, the the causes that he supports and how he's being portrayed and you know really is focused on the work and all that kind of stuff so there was a lot of similarities but uh but the way but yeah, that water I mean, was rolling it, down that body though i'm sorry i keep going back to it it was nice <laughs> well let's leave nice. some for those who are in the community that may take an audible bill with some planes to go to new york and see it before I mean, it ends on june 10th you know, know it's coming go fast ahead get there. Your, go ahead there. and get yeah, there lips are them tickets getting so, snatched up. Yeah. <laughs> and your aunties over here are saying, snatch them up too. Snatch so them up. Over. Yeah. Do what you gotta yeah, do. Yeah. Get up there. Go for it. <laughs> and this and and to be clear, this is not like a new play. This play is a revival. Right. You know, this play has been out 20 years ago, right? Yep. So, you know, it's had a lot of other, you know, actors that have, you know, played in Jesse's uh yeah. naked footsteps <laughs> but who, who's gonna try to fill up following them steps after this i don't know <laughs> because that's a that's a that's a man maury that's a that's what we call a man maury but uh but no oh, and, and, and the play again overall was fine like it was fine like like i was telling Dewan last night I, I i struggled with what the overall moral was supposed to be of the play and, and once I found out that the play was kind of written in the early 2000s, it kind of made a little more sense because there were certain just things that I don't know aged as well in 2022, just lingo wise or just like, I don't know, like I, I felt like some of the jokes when the audience was laughing was laughing more at being gay or whatever than with. Did you feel that at all, Dewan? No? Mm, I feel the play is about dick. In my mind, that's all it's about, too. So Literally, all the rest like, of this conversation, I'm like, you have no, it. I'm you know, check out, too. <laughs> honestly, like, I, I will say, however, out of, you know, out of all the dickology that was going on, <laughs> I will say that that actor that was a stand-in for um, yes. uh, Jesse Ferguson or whatever, he killed it. I wanted to marry that man. Yeah. 
I was like, yeah. he was. It was charming. He was and phenomenal yeah. and bubbly and so relatable and yeah. out, did, like just bodied that yeah. like his role in that play like didn't that miss the other jesse at all not at all and in fact i'm actually glad and i think i said this to Carell. like i'm glad that he wasn't in it because you don't really need a lot you don't really need a famous person you know a right. famous person in that in that, that role. particular role no right. shade you know to, to ferguson no. but um but i think having somebody who was a no name who really took the opportunity and shone shined shined mm-hmm. with it he he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and then there was, and we'll leave it at this one. Line. There was another character in the play that didn't get naked. Like he, he was just kind of like a, a, a now he was still actually kind of a major player. But at the end when they was doing the curtain call, like the the yeah, we're like I was like Dewan, look at look at that thing hanging to the right. Hey, that, Them pants that were tight. That was t- uh, 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 honey. I was like Kielbasa. I was like, Kilbasa and Chorizo, bitch. I was who, like, who passing these dudes, they had to drop trial. You ain't fooling me. You, uh, they had to drop trial to audition for this role. <laughs> they ain't fooling me. But uh, but yeah, community, if you could go see it, go see it. It's it's worth it. Yeah, it, it, it is. is worth it. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I don't even know what else is on the list. What else is on the list? Oh, you know what? We never talked about Willow winning. Congratulations. Uh, spoiler alert, my bad. Willow won Drag Race. It's been like the damn month. So yeah, yeah, that ain't no said spoiler. That. <laughs> so congrats to her. That's, I think, at least, I think over the season, we all kind of agreed she would at least be up there and kind of thought she would win. Lady yeah. Camden came in second place, so she kind of snuck in there towards the back half of that season. And, uh, Really kind of showed She had a slow rise, out. which was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So congrats to you, Willow. Um, I wanted to, this, <laughs> this came up literally before we hopped on the podcast or earlier today when I set the, the kind of like the potential list or whatever. These political ads in Pennsylvania are fucking mind boggling to me. It's so community is voting <laughs> season. You know, we were a big component of just making sure you're voting, making sure you're registered to vote. Making sure that you're still registered to vote because they're still purging people out the the voting ranks and things. Literally, like the commercials I'm seeing right now are like almost anti any minority group, like mm-hmm. which a lot of them are, but it's getting so fucking blatant. Like the one, and I had to like look it back up. Literally, the ad against the guy they're saying don't vote for him because he donated to Black Lives Matter and he cares about trans equal rights and trans, like, what did I put in here? Like, transgender surgery rights. That's what it was. Um, McCormick is too woke for Pennsylvania. And I was like... And it's running, like, multiple times. Like, it's insane to me. So, community, they are getting extra bold and, and maybe i was just naive i thought georgia was crazy mm-hmm. now, is well, you just, pennsylvania is a, is a battle state it's a battle it's, state it, it yeah is, you yeah, went from one battle state a, to another battle state mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah philly philly and quite frankly even um uh pittsburgh uh, really carried that state to blue mm-hmm. which was a shock the last the last election so um that yeah it's it have fun have fun seeing all that Girl. bullshit <laughs> we ain't got none of that ain't none of that and he donated to black lives man i was like y'all really y'all are really saying this shit right now this boldly so community mm-hmm. <laughs> time to turn up and turn out again they 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 do not want us voting they do not want us to turn up at all they want to discourage us they want to belittle us don't let it happen don't let it happen please and this is at every time there is voting happening mm-hmm. not just at the presidential election time Correct. which is which is which is problematic because most people will say oh i'm gonna show my civic duty by doing voting for the president but we but the local elections are the ones that impact us absolutely the most and impact this year our is communities the biggest out of probably any election in the last few yeah. years because if they get control of the senate and the, the the house biden even though he's not maybe doing everything he could do right now because of this the split in the senate blah 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 there's so many reasons 
They go Obama his ass. It was gonna happen. Obama's at, and then they're gonna still be in there if he loses. And so mm-hmm. it's set like the setup for t- like 2024 is this year. Mm-hmm. So 100 percent stay away. Yep. Let's be too woke for some bitches. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because... I mean, we see we see in the leak about the Supreme Court, you know, and trying to like we talked about, you know, reverse uh, Roe v. versus Wade, but it's again the senators that confirm those Supreme Court people. So again. These races matter, y'all. Like they mm-hmm. really, really matter. Like Dewan said, not just when it comes to when it's time to elect a new president. Oof. Yeah, that one that made like that made me sit up. I was like, this is some foul ass shit. <laughs> Look, I might be dialing in from the Turks and Caicos when this is all <laughs> said and done. Like I I already said it on the podcast. I know I talked to y'all about it, but you know, depending on how the next sets of elections go, depending on what happens he, next year, and then w- depending on what happens going into the presidential election, depending on those two things, I might not be here because as a black gay man, I want I don't want to be paying got my goddamn taxes to a, a country that don't got my back, period. Facts. So, period. you know, like if, if I need to move, I, look, I, I'll give up everything. Yeah, I won't even sell anything. Just open house, y'all take whatever. <laughs> Let me get my little, get myself a little bag with a couple little, uh, a couple of little swim trunks and a toothbrush. <laughs> I was about to say, what you gonna put in your bag? What what would make that bag? Swim trunks and a toothbrush. That's it. That's all I need. I ain't, I ain't gotta, t- I ain't gotta take anything else. Bank account is bank account is electronic. I know. So well, at least you at know? least take your computer and your AirPods so we can still do the the, the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe maybe I'll oh, remember no, to do that. You, but you look, know, I might be like because she gotta watch her shows, so <laughs> right. she'll have it. She'll. <laughs> <I> mean, <right. laughs> she said, "I gotta see episode five of uh, Secret Secret Life or whatever it was." <laughs> My secret partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! Well, actually, you know what? This conversation ties into our Ask Your Auntie, so let's actually take a quick little tea break. <sighs> We interrupt this episode for very important information. That's right. You've been asking for it for a long time, and we have heard you. Yep. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Yo, Yo aunties. aunties got, got merch. merch. Hey, <laughs> that's right. You know what? We got tees. We got long tees. We got sweatshirts. We got fanny packs. We got... There's just a whole game of the stuff out there, so go and check that out. Mm. We are so appreciative of your love and support, and we are so excited to launch it. Girl, where can we find it at? Ma'am, they can head right over to minoritsreport.com to check out the selection. Mm. That's right. That's M-I-N-O-R-I-T-E-A report.com. Woo! I'm about to go get me some myself. All right, ladies. What time it is. What time it is. Ask your Aussie. All right, this is a long one, and I'm, I'm going to try to make it a little shorter somehow when I'm going through it. So here we you go. Make it, it says, um, Ask your aunties. It says, uh, Wait, you might have to drop this one in the chat because we might not be able to remember all this. <laughs> Let's see here. And I was trying to do it here because you know how the chat be acting up. You got to cut it in half and all that stuff. I'll do it while we respond, maybe. Okay. Here okay. We go. Um, it says, I don't know if this is better to ask your aunties or a discussion point, but it's something that I want to bring up to you all. Um, it says, ask your aunties. So actually, he did give us a shortened version and then he gives us the background behind it. So it says, socially liberal, fiscally conservative. Is a trope used to make people feel <laughs> wow he coming at us to make people feel good for vocally supporting causes without putting money behind it education trans rights infrastructure healthcare for it all etc all require money so can you truly be socially liberal and fiscally conservative so that's the ask your auntie's question and then he kind of gives uh, reasons behind it or some background because he said this stems from an episode that he listened to that we had from the summer of 2020. And there was just something said that I want to challenge you all on. Um, 
He said it's specifically oh, Auntie Chardonnay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly, but that's kind of wrong. And he said, Auntie, you mentioned you are socially liberal and fiscally conservative. And so mm. he put reasons why he doesn't think one could be both. But maybe it's just maybe go, the rebuttal. Go ahead. Like, that. Oh, you want to say the whole thing? Yeah, say the whole thing. We can't answer the question the correctly thing. about the whole thing. Right. <laughs> Ooh, buckle up, because it's long as hell. It okay. says, uh, while I understand what you mean by that, because it's something that is said a lot, I would argue that you cannot be both because they are directly related. Most people say they are fiscally conservative in regards to our national debt, which, to be honest, is absurdly high, but nonetheless should not be a metric to determine fiscal conservatism in politics. A balanced budget with no debt or at least manageable debt is necessary, whether liberal, conservative, black, white, brown, Puerto Rican, or Asian. However, when it comes to social programs, one cannot be fiscally conservative and social liberal. You cannot advocate socially for health care for all without fiscally supporting it. You cannot socially advocate for defunding the policy without also being willing to possibly throw more taxpayer money at other resources. Homelessness, trans rights, infrastructure, education, all these things require money. So, I, so while I understand the sentiment of being fiscally conservative, I would say that you really just want to not have our taxpayer money wasted, which isn't being fiscally conservative, it's being a person that understands money. The trope of socially liberal, socially liberal, fiscally conservative is just a masquerade for people that have means to support financially to say that they support a cause without actually financially supporting it. Furthermore, if I can be socially liberal, fiscally conservative, why can't I be fiscally liberal but socially conservative? It doesn't really exist because people have tied what they believe into what they will pay for. I hope all is well with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to end uh end the question yeah, hope goes all with you and he also gave his answer which maybe at the end of this i'll read that paragraph but okay so so i guess first and i forget what it was we might it was probably politics seasons if it's 2020 so I, I forget exactly how what led up to that conversation i do recall you saying the social liberal we were talking we form. were talking about blacks who are you know, we were talking about blacks who are conservatives. Okay. And then I had made the comment that I am socially um, liberal, but fiscally conservative. Okay. So do you, and, and so, we're, we're a podcast of ands. We feel a lot of things can be and, and I'm probably like the most gray of that, but do, maybe Dewan, let's start with you. Do you feel, do you agree with what he said? Any parts of what he said, or do you still maybe explain why you feel like you're maybe liberal and conservative and conservatively like fiscally. Yeah. Um, so I think that the, this individual makes some, some really interesting and valid points period. Okay. Um, I say that because that's an easier term for people to understand. Got it. So I don't believe that, um, that being fiscally conservative means that we're not funding programs because the, for me, and this is my definition of social uh, liberalism, is I believe that, that we need to support these programs financially, but we need to do it, in my opinion, without going into motherfucking debt. So the fact that, the fact that our deficit is out of control and the fact that every time we get a Democrat in the, in the White House essentially focus on bringing down the national debt, which was raised up by overspending, not being fiscally conservative with the spending that's being done on these non-liberal issues, right? Um, I believe in right-sizing that. So, you know, while I don't disagree with the, the sentiment of, you know, that, that there people can hide behind this phrase as, you know, as, as a trope or whatever. First of all, Auntie Chardonnay ain't like that. So, you know, I throw money at the causes that are meaningful for me and meaningful right. for my community. And oftentimes if, well, not oftentimes, I don't go into debt doing so. And I expect, <laughs> and I expect my government to be able to do the same. I believe quite frankly, that we suffer on the social aspects of our great nation um, for pursuit of lining the pockets of the 1%. And that shit ain't right. And it doesn't sit right with me. So I understand and I, and I value balancing 
the budget in a way that doesn't disenfranchise people that's part of my community. Because I'm always going to be black and gay first, yeah. period. Yeah. I'm going to be for the community. And so <laughs> it's not about, for me anyways, it's not about hiding behind some kind of you know label. Like I said, I use this term because it's a very abridged version of basically saying where I stand is on the liberal side of things, you know? So when it comes to education for all, when it comes to healthcare for all, when it comes to making sure that we are significantly investing in the arts and sciences and, and other kinds of what we would consider extracurriculars, but things like um, teaching young children about money management, about all of these other components that are about that are helpful for them to lead healthy and, and fruitful lives that suffer because the money are, is being taken out of those programs and funding other things that aren't benefiting our communities at all, but are certainly using are being used to, to line the pockets of the select few. And I'm not down with that. I'm also not down with, I get that, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of specifically conservatives. Um, that are all about um, spending more money in our military budget and believe that that's the, you know, that's the appropriate way to, you know, for us to exert our power and whatnot. But we all know that the more money that we throw at them, we've seen those bills for, you know, $25,000 on a gold toilet that they be spending because they have the surplus and they have to make that money, they have to spend that money to keep it. So I don't, I don't believe in swinging that and I don't believe in hiding behind any kind of terminology. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say what I mean. And I mean what I say. It was the so laugh at for the, me. It was the chuckle for me. <laughs> at the end, at the end of the day, at the end of the day for me, now there may be there and there are other people out there. Like there are gays that say they, you know, that they're liberal. And then if you, if we had the opportunity to look at their voter cards mm. and see what they do, just like them people that be going out there to Chick-fil-A, which I don't do by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just like them people that be doing that on the DL or whatever. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but for me personally, you know, I, there are, there are things that I believe that we should be spending our, our, our hard earned taxes on, and we shouldn't have to sacrifice our social programs. We shouldn't have to sacrifice social security. The fact that, that we have people that are scared about their financial retirement, we're all paying all this goddamn money into a system that we won't be able to utilize. Now, how the fuck is that right? So for me, fiscal responsibility is that you are looking at the budget and the money that you're supposed to, if we're collecting money for social security, that money better, better, better be there. And we shouldn't be borrowing against these social programs to fund things like the military and like these special interests that shouldn't be happening. So that's, that's my perspective. Sherelle. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things. I, I really appreciate this question because it's one, this is, I'm assuming someone that has one, taking the time to go back to start rocking with us from the back. Period. Go. Right? So you do write this question. You didn't just right? be like, oh, I found out about this podcast. Let me just jump right in. No, you went back. So yeah, cause this I, question came I, in I fucks like with March. you. I so fucks like, with you. So I appreciate whoever this person is. Like, I appreciate it. Because that's a real person. That's a real community yeah. member. So I, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact uh, or just the comfort in asking for clarification too. Because the truth of the fact is, we know Auntie Dewan and we know what she means. She's the, she's the auntie that definitely put her money where her, her pocket where her money is yeah. too. You know, she buy back, you know, she buy black, she support the causes, she donates, she does these things. So I could understand when you hear something and you may not know the individual, you will ask a question like this. So Absolutely. that's fair. So I understand where the question is coming from. But to be fair, that's not who Auntie Dewan is. Right. Now, as far as me, I agree. I am. I don't got a lot of money, but I give what I got. But I'm also a frontline bitch, so I'm the mm -hmm. person that's gonna always just. I'm I'm right there in the front, like let let's go, um, because that's how I show up the most. Um, but for me, I I don't have a lot of money, so I don't have a lot to give, and I give where I can, and I do what I can. And I honestly feel like that's where it should be. But I definitely understand when people hear, you know, fiscally conservative, I agree with this person. That's exactly where my mind would have gone to is you're someone who is very 
choosy with how you spend your money and you're you're not putting your money where your mouth goes when it comes to being social socially um what do you say socially liberal liberal you know? right. yeah so i understand how though you're right writer both things can exist but i understand what auntie dewan was coming from was that was a term that kind of made it make sense in a way where i was like well i don't gotta break my back to also be socially you know fiscally liberal as well too like here in washington a couple years ago they passed some kind of law where now um either you opt in for this program where you pay a certain type of money to take care of the elderly or you pay additional taxes when tax time come um, to support mm. the elderly around here for, for, for care. And I voted for it. I voted for people to have to do this because of mm. the fact that we need to take care of each other. Like you, you genuinely cannot be socially liberal and, but be afraid to put your money where your mouth is. You know, when they be like, or oh, resources, or resources, resources, whatever it is, but even, but just, even just the, the whole eight cents for a, a bag at the grocery store, bitch. Yes. If you want to talk about, I give a fuck about the planet, bitch. you can't pay eight cents for a damn bag. <laughs> Come on. I did, that at, I did that at Whole Foods yesterday. <laughs> Girl, but I mean, like the, the number of people arguing about it but they want to be like oh my god global warming oh my god we're not doing this to yeah. protect the earth but they want to talk about eight damn cents i got damn target for a damn bag <laughs> <laughs> like it don't make sense so i completely agree with the person like if you're going to be socially liberal you have to be ready to start helping where we can because everyone's right when they talk about free health care and free education and free all these things that money is going to have to come from somewhere yeah. It's going yeah. to have to come from somewhere. And I don't understand why we don't give a fuck about each other and loving each other so much where we're like, you know what? I got you. And, and, and whenever I need, you got me. Like if we all just got on the same page, it will be a system that work itself because you never will go out because somebody got you just like you got somebody in the way that you mm -hmm. can. You know, someone's going to fill in the gap, but we all have to be on the same page in order for that to work. It's like you wasn't raised right. <laughs> that's what, that's <laughs> right. What, that's what, you, know? raised, you wasn't raised right. Like, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and what do you think, bro? A th few things like, and I had to write them down as they were coming in my brain. I, I think first thing that kind of popped in my brain was just like, I feel that socially conservative, A, has been kind of ruined by white men that just terminology. So there's already a negative maybe connotation around that term. And so maybe it's just even saying like socially responsible, you're responsible of what's going out and watching what, you know, what what's coming in and watching what goes out and things like that. Another part of me is just like, at the end of the day, this deficit ain't going nowhere. Wait, you're they're saying you said, fiscally you said, responsible. Yeah, fiscally responsible, fiscal, not yeah, fiscal, socially. Okay, because you said socially, and I was like, yeah, I, was like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, I said <laughs> white people, the reason why. <laughs> <For real? Okay. laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let me, back, let me even chop that out. Hold on. Let me start that shit over. Uh, uh, no, uh, you better leave that in there, Vince. Right, right. we check, girl. No, fiscally, fiscally conservative has been ruined yes. by white men. There you and go. so that's where a lot of that negative. Damn, yes. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. <laughs> that's okay, boo. That's a, Ooh, look, we got, you. got your back. Before we get another one in 2024 Jesus. saying, well, Auntie right. Carell said in 2022. <laughs> it's going to be a campaign act. Auntie Carell said. <laughs> no, fiscally conservative has been ruined by yeah. white men because they're not caring for the community outside mm -hmm. of other white men. Yes. So it's hard for them to be fiscally conservative and socially liberal because they're not looking out for nobody else but they sell. Right, right. However, I feel like people of color, and, and there's always anomalies and things like that, so it's not all, but I would say it, there might be a chance for an and situation for communities of color because we are trying to help our communities come up. And that might be tied fiscally and socially at the same time. And you still might be fiscally responsible of making sure that you're not overspending of what you don't have, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's where Dewan comes from. It's just like, I'm responsible with money and I would expect others in the government to do so as well, because <clears throat> if I'm taking the time to be considerate enough to do so and paying all this taxpayer money, that should be the bare minimum expectation. Mm -hmm. I, and I agree fundamentally. For me, 
I'm like, the debt, I, I almost feel like the debt at a government level, and I'm trying to watch how I almost say it, it almost is a, not a made up thing because it's true, but there's ways to, there's always ways to find money and print money and do things that you need to do to find when you need to do it. The government sometimes, especially the people that are elected, don't care about the social part of it. So they'll find $40 billion to give to Ukraine right quick, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not saying whatever it is, <laughs> but they won't find $40 billion to help get rid of student loan debt. They won't find $40 billion to fix communities up and bring them up. So mm -hmm. that's the part where I think the social liberal mm -hmm. part really plays into it. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, if the conservatives are going to play that way, I'm going to be liberal and play that way too. spend some money to make sure at least my communities are getting up and we'll deal with it later because since they've been doing it that way for 400 years and we are still here, we'll find a way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. part of me is like, in theory, yes, I, I'm responsible with my money. And in theory for me, my brain's like, if we don't got it. Why we, how, how are we spending? But they, they clearly they just be finding billions and billions that I don't know where it is in this checkbook. They always find that money. So, mm -hmm. so for me, it's just like if I were in place, let me find me a quick fifty billion to to, to help uh, my communities. And so that's how I think I would play. So I'd be like socially liberal and fiscally liberal and just spend, <laughs> even though in theory I get that that's not how it should be. Yeah. Um, and there was something else I want to see here. Oh, well, anyway, yeah. Um, so, again, like Jarrell and Dewan said, it's a great question, and, and I completely get it because I think just the negatively behind fiscally, let me get it right again, fiscally conservative has been because white men have not helped people that look like us and sound like us in our communities. And so I think it's their responsibility <laughs> for this negativity, honestly. And it's up to us to maybe shift what that looks like and sounds like what fiscally conservative looks like in our communities and say, fuck yeah. the other, the other maybe definition of it. Yeah. I think the only thing that I would add um, to what you both said is that, um, you know, I think we all agree that language matters and yeah. we saw, yes, 100%. Uh, we saw <laughs> concepts like defund the police be divisive you know, based on the language that's yeah. that's being used and how, you know, how parties on both sides, on all sides, you know, interpreted that um, that phrase defund the defund the police in many different ways. And so, you know, I think I'm always open to learning. I know that language is evolving. And so if there is, you know, better terminology uh, that I can use to help clarify that position. Position. For those that, you know, who might not be listening for a long time and know kind of like how we rock and how we roll or whatever, um, also recognizing that in a, in a public, on a public platform such as this, a soundbite <laughs> outside of context yeah. can go a many a different ways. And I'm not, I'm not making the, the assumption that this is what happened in this particular case, yeah. you know, writer of the question. I'm, I, you know, clearly you were listening to the conversation yeah, and made some various two observations, like, Damn, you know, so, 20, 20. but I, but I think it's also important that we recognize that sometimes we might not have, we might not have the vernacular, That's you know, that, um, that, you know, appropriately articulates our point of view. And we may use language that can be triggering or could be perceived as covering for other kind of covert intentions. That's, not necessarily aligned with what we're really intending. So I recognize that. Um, and if there's other language that we should be using and or we need to make some shit up, like, you know, <laughs> black people will have our own language anyway. So sure, at the well. end of the we'll day- like, that, 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 and be like, bitch, I know. Look, this is the flippity flop. <laughs> this is the fi flippity <laughs> flop. So, so they <laughs> did that to us. We gonna <laughs> flippity flop it on them, right? Period, so period. Wh wh whatever it needs to be. So at the end of the day, you know, I, I think I just want to call out that, you know, that language is always evolving and our interpretation, like, for us to be intentional about how we use language is really important. And sometimes we say things, you know, for the sake of expediency, you know, and, Ooh, and like you know, of course on the, the uh, on the, <laughs> and then on, on the podcast, you know, we, we're also here to entertain. Let's be clear, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, do not take, you know, this, these ask your aunties is for entertainment purpose, purposes only. We don't want, do, do we not, don't want, <laughs> we do, do not, not want. come after us. <laughs> look, legally <laughs> or physically. <laughs> because, because we got one that got hands, advice. we got one that's fiscally <laughs> conservative, and we got whatever the fuck I am. I'll find some words and some way that the, the chess maneuvers and on shit out. I'm sitting over that. here like, I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and then quickly too we just wanna like get... I say like I told y'all run that back if I was wrong right. <laughs> <laughs> you said if I was wrong play the clip it's gonna play be the clip, clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. say what I said Oreo 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 <laughs> Uh, but let's read this person's yeah. answer too. It says, um, obviously my answer is no, you cannot be fiscally conservative and socially liber liberal because of reasons listed above. Though I will recognize that there can be differences in what you may want to support with your money within that liberalism. I heard this argument from another acquaintance once, uh, one time, and it made me really think about how I spend my money and, and to what causes it goes to. Just wanted to share so that we can be clear and what we mean and hopefully show people that if we want some of these social programs, we must put pressure on our politicians to use our money correctly and balance. Hope all is well with y'all. Well, there we go. Oh. So it, honestly, and can I just, the, can I I just add there, it one like more we're thing? All saying the similar thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can I just add one more thing? This is not just about money. And that's why I made that point about yeah. resources because that can be your time. That could be, I'm actually, you know, oh, I'm going to send an email or I'm going to write a letter or I'm going to make a phone call or I'm going to, you know, physically volunteer or I'm going to, you know, help at a polling place. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, it, this is not just a, a money conversation because at the end of the day, you know, like um, I am not a frontline person, you know, I, I, I've, I, I've, I've recognized that. And I've even come to terms with, you know, like working through the shame that I had around that because I thought, oh, well, you know, I should be one of those people, you know, that if you have the opportunity, you go march with Martin Luther King or whatever. And it's like, I'm not built like that. No, I'm, I'm, I am not built like that. But that doesn't diminish the way that I can contribute. Right. Right. And the fact that I use this platform, the fact that I use my whole daytime job to combat you know, to combat racism and discrimination and, 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 and inequality that exists in the workplace within my professional life, you know, that there are, and there are many other things that we all do to help contribute um, our resources, whatever they are, um, to the causes that are most meaningful for us. And I think the one of the things that, that most frustrate a lot of us, I think all of the aunties is apathy. Cause Absolutely. ain't nothing, ain't nothing like somebody who's sitting on the sidelines, ain't doing got a goddamn thing, but complaining and you expecting some results like that's that shit, mm -hmm. that shit that's don't fly. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, thank you for that question. And thank you. Yeah. Like Jerosa, <laughs> thank you for listening because that shows you've been going through the catalog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause that was two years ago. That was two years ago, but it's yeah. very timely that you sent this in because we're in that cycle again and we're mm -hmm. in, having these conversations again. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to send your Ask Your Auntie questions at AYA at MinorityReport.com or DM us. And we also have an update from last week Ask Your Auntie's question. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> earlier I said that was last week about the dick. That was two weeks ago. Two last weeks, week's ago, episode yes. was the mental health awareness uh, question and have an update because the, the listener listened to that episode and said, so I found a therapist Hold on. So I found a therapist. I tried meds before, but had the same sexual issues that Auntie Jarrell had. Um, but I didn't change it. Wait, but didn't change it. So I stopped. My mm -hmm. boyfriend said, as long as long, as long as I'm working on it, he's with me. Thank you all for the feedback. Love y'all and appreciate your thoughts and support. So thank you for listening to that. And that's glad awesome. that you, you, you took it, whatever advice we gave. Um, and, and we mentioned too, like if the, the first meds, you didn't like the, the, the results mm -hmm. of it, there's other options Angel, out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And your and therapist. I, yeah. And your yeah. therapist. But like the med part is something that like, I'm glad I was able to share because yeah. that was something that was unknown to me. And I, for a minute there, I was like, man, I'm 
am I really this messed up that like I can't even do that now? And then it dawned on me that it was my meds that was stopping me from being from being able to do that. But yeah. there's multiple different types of meds and um my actually how I'm working through it with my um doctor is I have to try like four different generic brands before I can get this new name. brand. Yeah, this yeah. name brand one that might That's be insurance bullshit more. by the way. Yeah, for insurance. <laughs> yep, it's insurance bullshit. Um so I'm actually gonna be changing it up again um come June as well too. Um, because the truth of the fact is like it is supposed to help you feel like different you are supposed to feel different and it and at some point you do get off of it you at some points you find yourself being like oh I skipped the pill today and I still felt good and I see that from time to time but I still find myself quite oftenly being like is this me or is this the pill and that is something that when you're battling through depression anxiety your brain still kind of thinks about against it and the moment you feel one thing not happy it's like damn this shit ain't working you know so i do know the difference and i'm thankful that i took that first pill that did cause the whole being able not to come thing because i know what it felt like to finally be like oh my gosh look at this i was like why you can't the one time <laughs> I didn't scream, down my the ball. one time I didn't scream, representative <laughs> immediately on the phone. I, I said, yes. representative, <laughs> you know, she was respectful. Okay. But I yeah, do so I know the difference. I do feel like one of the biggest misnomers about modern medicine, particularly about, um, you know, like medication, prescription, prescription, prescription prescription medication. Sorry, I cannot talk today at all. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions is that that like medications, it are almost equal to, let's say, surgery. Surgery, you go in, you get something done, and you know the result. A lot of medication is, it's about chemistry that is dealing with your own Physio- physiology and your own body chemistry and your and the diet that you have and your own genetics and all of that other stuff that becomes an unknown. So although there may be several drugs, which is why there are several versions of the same, several versions of drugs that treat the same kind of uh, issue, it's because they don't always work on all people in the same way. It's, and why look, they it's ask just what other medications like, you're also on as well. <laughs> Yeah. Like Absolutely. Look, shit. if you if you look, if you take a gummy, if two people take a, the same gummy, they may have two completely different experiences. We know, you know, we know and that's, experience. <laughs> she had to she had to make it relatable. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, she had to make it relatable. But like at the end of the day, the reason and if and, and if you go to any kind of, you know, like, you know, weed shop or whatever, and you talk to, to the people that work there, and especially if it's a good one, they will know that. It is about chemistry. It is about, it's about what you've eaten that day. It's about how many, how many, how much of that is, is carbohydrates. It's about what other medications are, are you taking? It's about your current physical state. It's about, it, it, there's so many things, so many factors. And I think, and, and Jarrell, I mean, please, you know, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong or you have a different perspective, particularly on this topic. But I yeah. think a lot of people go into um, situations like, like this with the notion that, okay, well, I'm going to get on meds. My doctor is going to prescribe me like the pill that I'm supposed to take or the three pills that I'm supposed to take. And that's supposed to work for me. And if it doesn't work for me now, it's like, well, then damn, what's wrong with me? But it might not be anything wrong with you. It's just, they, that's not the kind of pills for you. I will say that's probably the second step. I think the big, the first step and the biggest step is more so coming to terms that you need the help. Right. I think that's the oh, real reason that stops yeah. people from taking medication first because of the fact that you have to come to in terms that you can't do something on your own for yourself. And mm-hmm. there's a sense of vulnerability in that. And just as much as we preach about like forgiveness or preach being human, like we all make mistakes and, you know, like, the same thing happens to us as well too. You know, sometimes we come up short within our own selves and we need that assistance to help our own selves. 
you know? And, and that's where, um, you know, like meds come in, in a sense of, you know, you can take care of yourself um, and you can get a little push with the help of meds. Um, for me, it was, I come from a family that didn't, I come both sides of my family, don't necessarily put the, the best in their health. And mm-hmm. so I've seen a lot of examples of what happens when you don't take care of yourself. And it was for me, I decided that I wanted to break that generational curse and I wanted to start showing up and I want to start showing up for myself and being an example for my nephews and my nieces about the importance of taking care of your body. And that may be with the help of meds or eating healthy and working out. They are all the same thing. The overall goal is to take care of yourself. I am on antidepressants, I am on um, anti-anxiety medicine, and I am now on um, uh, high blood pressure medicine as well, too, because my blood pressure is now through the roof, something that also runs high in my family, but also it's one of the highest, like, silent killers out there yeah. that people die yeah. from, from not Especially checking. In the black community. Right. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, like, it is important that we take care of ourselves and do what we need to do to see the next day. And if we don't take these next steps, we are robbing ourselves potentially of additional days in the future. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and, 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 and another and situation, it could be like you mentioned, like meds and being eating healthy and things like that. And, 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 it could be a combination y'all like mm-hmm. it's cool like and like and i get the history of why the black community and a lot of black and brown communities don't like the doctor i get the history of it 1000 mm-hmm. percent. my sister went to tuskegee so they teach that shit so like i get it <laughs> but we need to realize we a find the right doctors there's a lot of black and brown doctors out there but we can part. also advocate for ourselves as well. And if it don't feel right, speak up. Yeah. Like Jerome said, this med ain't working for me. I, I got to come, mm-hmm. bitch. I got to come. <laughs> speak up for yourself. Don't be miserable. And like, just because mm-hmm. you think there's only one, it's not going to fit all. It's not going to fit all. So that's cool to speak up for yourself. That's dope. Yeah. And it's okay. It's yeah. okay. That's, that's also and why I feel like, I'm sorry. That, that's why I also feel like like our Ask Your Auntie segment, when people are asking questions, I feel it's so powerful because Absolutely. oftentimes, and I, I've been in like the training space, the learning and development space all the time. So I've been facilitating training programs for the last 25 years of my, my, my professional career. So and one of the things that we always say is that if you have a question, ask it because nine times out of 10, somebody else has that same exact yeah. question. Mm-hmm. And that happens in real life. And I think that's what makes this experience you know this experience that we have the privilege that we have to be able to 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 have the trust of our community um and sharing some of the most intimate things about their lives and i think the value that that brings is that there are other people out there who are going through the same exact situations and they're able to feel seen and feel a little bit less um alone because they now know that it's like oh damn well i'm I'm not the only one that was feeling this way. Yeah. Whew, that yeah. that actually takes a little bit of the, the load off. I'm still in my shit, but yeah. at least I know that I'm not in this by myself. And one other thing I want to add, and I'll end it with that because it's, I don't want to beat the, the horse too much because we had a whole ask auntie about it. But I also just want to say, um, if the listener is listening to this too, or anyone that's listening to this going through something similar, Try not to compare what you're going through to what I'm going through Mm -hmm. because I'm still going through every day and I'm not going to sugarcoat and act like I I made it through the tunnel. I see the light, but I'm still definitely in that tunnel and I want to be clear on that. And my path is unique to me because of how my body is built and what I'm going through and my experience that led to where I am today. So how I get there is going to be different than how you may get there, but do not discredit yourself because you are not where I am. I had to take a route to get here and you will have to take your own route to get to where I am too. It will happen. You just have to make sure you keep choosing yourself 
every single day. And the next thing you know, you didn't travel the whole mile and you didn't ran a half marathon. Well, I ain't running nothing because, like, because of that, that's a rubbish, right? That's, no, because I don't run nothing but this mouth. But you know, but the point being is, you know, it will happen at your own pace, and that's yeah. one thing I definitely want to make sure that I say very out loud because, yes, we all definitely go through and we all have our battles, um, but how we solve them, how we come through them, may not always be the same for each person. So oh, it right. doesn't mean that you're not you know so yeah i love that so again send your questions aya at minorityreport.com or dm us these are dope 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 questions dope dope conversations we enjoy the vulnerability you guys are having with us we enjoy you checking us potentially a little bit and yes. getting clarification that you need to talk about it because that's what this is for that's why we're building Absolutely. this damn community y'all yes, let's ma'am. talk Let's have, I mean, obviously, we, we'll have a kiki and, you know, talk about Jesse Williams, mm, batter up and everything, but <laughs> these conversations are also needed. So, um, and that, I know we're that actually candy. is a better yeah. name for that that play. It should have been called Batter Up. Mm, instead of batter Up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Marty like Oak. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick oh. shout out to Corrine Jean Pierre. She's going to be the new uh, press secretary. For the yes. White House, she's the first Black and LGBTQ lady. Come on yes. now. Stand up, bitch. Yes. You know, so that's dope. I can't wait to see. <laughs> black women just say shit different. Yeah, <laughs> really I do. Wait. I can't wait for her to be like. <laughs> it's the looks, right? I can't wait. And, and, and here's the sad thing. You know they're going to come after her. They, they mm-hmm. always come after Black women. So we need to stand up for her. We need to retweet the shit she's saying. We need to share the videos and be like, bitch, no, you ain't going to say this shit to mm-hmm. Kareem. Leave her alone. So let's protect her. But uh, that's amazing that she has this opportunity. Um, and I'm excited to see see the great job that she's going to be doing. Yes. Um, and then, I don't know, like quickly. Oh, I wanted you to say this day I put on the list, this day and time, a memory came up today. We were at the formation tour six years ago. And I was like, that was six years ago? Six Damn. years? Wow. Six. Beyonce, My we need another life. solo album. Yeah. I don't want a Carter's album. I don't want a Lion King album. I want a Beyonce album. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> My life forever changed that year. <laughs> that tour was everything. Yeah. That album was did, everything. Did y'all see it in Chicago? Did you, we you, were, in, you were in Dallas. Dallas. You were yeah, in Dallas then, yeah, because I mentioned 2015, yeah. I um, I saw her twice. I still, I'll never forget it. i never <laughs> forget it. I saw her that Tuesday in Minneapolis. Bitch had to work the next day. I said, I'm, get, I'm getting free money today. Don't ask me to do <laughs> shit. <laughs> I bought my ticket to see her that Saturday in Chicago because she had two nights in Chicago. Literally the next day, uh, that same week, she was there Friday, Saturday. I got me tickets for Saturday, bitch. I, I was it. up in there yeah. twice in one week. I would live my best life. Formation best tour life. Was, yeah. Fire. That tour was mm-hmm. fire. Oh, mm-hmm. just the opening oh, when they had the, the, the fires coming out of those stokes and you and the cube. felt. <sighs> and it was like, oh, got hot sauce in my bag, swag. Best. And then, ah! like, then she threw the hat off and then they came up, they walked. See, I won. I was like, Best. <laughs> Cause, Best And I didn't even know it. Everything. Corey said it to me. He's like, he calls me at work. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm at work. What do you want? He's like, guess what happened this day a few years ago? I'm like, well, he's like, we was at the Beyonce formation. So, and I was at my desk like, I want bitch. <laughs> Bitch, don't got me hype at work and thinking about that damn tour. <laughs> yeah, it's been and so like I I read somewhere like a, like a couple weeks ago, sometime last month, that like apparently she tapped some producer who is known for making like like um like house music for like voguing and stuff like that for her next album. How a Beyonce house? I can't. I Bitch. can't do it. I Bitch. Can't do it. Bitch. <laughs> Look. Bitch. Yes, I said the same we, thing. Look, I said we, she all gonna be, we all going to be twirling glow sticks <laughs> for the next six months. <laughs> I said, let me get my hand. Let me get my hand performance bet. down, bitch. Get my floor work together, okay? I, I can see I, that. My, my edges, my, I mean, my hairline already receding. 
<laughs> this shit gonna be all the way back there. <laughs> I'm gonna be bald. Bitch, just scout, just scout me. Wow, just scout me. that that's dope. Yeah. Can you so, imagine that would like be dope. Just drop yeah. a house single out the blue for the summer. Because you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for house music to come back. Mm-hmm. I, I I really am. Like I, I miss I miss a lot of the a, a lot of the, the old like you know house jams and man that would be just my mouth is like still a game like <laughs> i need that in my life yes because I... people will be dead the whole point of house music is you dance oh my you dance God. The fuck up. yes i mean it's cardio oh bitch <laughs> yeah, okay love <laughs> like, yeah so yes. when i saw that when i saw that i said oh, I'm, I'm, take I'm, even i can't it. Look, that's what I had to do because I was just going through too many emotions. I was like, this is too much information. This is literally like, I just can't. (laughs) I'm sitting here. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't take that energy because I'm going to be upset with it if it doesn't happen. That's I wish I did not hear that. (laughs) One of the rumors is out there. Let's let's start that movement. Y'all say, we need a house album. We need a house (laughs) album. We need a, a house song. Come on. Justice for house music, Beyonce. Come on now. <laughs> and you heard it first. Hey, I know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah. You got to show me love. <laughs> I'm just trying to think how would how would Beyonce do house in 2022? It would. I. You know. It would have artist, to have a Houston vibe to it, though. Yeah. It, it would. You know, AK47. I feel like it'll be oh very much god. like that. That mm. type of voguing. It would be mm. like it would go hard. Like it's not gonna be like that old school house music. It's right. gonna be like that new school, hard hitting house music oh that you God. would see in the room and, the, and 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 ballroom yeah. scenes. Yes, she would have. That's where she would go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So when I read that, I was like, it makes sense because that's Beyonce's lane. Like that's how she hits that hard. So why not? Like, so we're gonna, we're, yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna have, to, yeah, we're gonna have to start uh, watching, rewatching old episodes of a, uh, of a uh, legendary, legendary, and because like that, that music, because that's the kind of music, mm-hmm. that's exactly. the kind of music. Yeah. The mother is here. Mm-hmm. The mother can you, is can here. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm about uh, to pop this pussy on your face. I, I, I would not be able to take it. I would not be able to take it. Oh, that's so funny. That would be everything. Yeah. That, the thought yeah, yeah, of yeah. it already is too much. Everything. For me. Yeah. I can't, so. I can't handle that thought. Um, I need to get out of here. <laughs> it's too much for me. It's she needs to wash her legs, her hands, and her ass, and her brain. <laughs> And what's up to Janet? By the way, we saw you at the Derby, girl, looking amazing. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, we need another Janet good. album. Yes. Oh my god! Oh look, and and killing them dance moves. Girl, like, she like, looks great. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Come on, mm. come on, Jan. Oh my god! Actually, okay. I actually Go wanted some of them outfits that the backup dancers had, like that that, that orange. It, uh... yeah. Yes, bitch. I said. That was dope. I was like, I want that. I Absolutely. want that whole thing. Like a pleated kilt, kilt with like and a then pant. Like, like a pant or like like a cape almost on the side. Yeah. Like it, I was like, it was fire. I'm here with the like a long sleeve, but had like a little cutout on the side. Yeah, I said, it was fire. Like, yes, fire. They look dope. They did. I was like, okay, okay. Come on, Jan. We need another album from you too. Uh, we just, we just need a jam Beyonce collabo or something. Shit, like my head. See now, you slow. you really Imagine. trying to fuck us up, <laughs> girl. <laughs> look, you. <laughs> Imagine they said all these years. Now we gonna come back to get. No, don't do nope. that. Nope, don't I won't be it. at work for the remainder of don't, the year. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm still, I'm still waiting on the sound. That'll be a dope EP with Brandy and Mar- Mariah Carey to come out, and even just the fucking video clips on YouTube. Oh, it's like them singing again. Where did I listen to it? Is Tyler, the actual maybe? song out? Yeah, the roof, the roof with uh, the bridge. But here's the thing, like, it's, it's dope. It's dope, don't that- get me wrong. Okay. I wish Mariah gave Brandy the second verse. Because okay. all she did was give Brandy the background vocals. <laughs> Look, she usually reserved those for herself. I so. know. And, and, and it's still a collab of Mariah and Brandy background vocals. And mm-hmm. it's a little different and it's dope. 
But I'm like, damn, I wish I heard like Brandy sing a verse of it, which mm-hmm. would have been fire too. But yeah, okay. Like, but I mean, like, even just the YouTube video of watching them, yeah. like, oh, you should know. I was like, yeah. oh, bitch. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I was like, this, just to be a fly in that room, bitch, I would have been like, I know. Damn. Right. Mm. And you can see Brandy was still even like giddy. She's like, yeah. She's like, it's Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was singing her shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that roof song was in my mm-hmm. head for like a week. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get it out of my head. I'm going to have to check yeah. it out. And you yeah. know what, like, Black. And I love life. I love us. I love us so much because not for have you ever to now be eligible for diamond status. Mm-hmm. Girl, how long has that album been out for almost what, like 25 years or something? A long ass know, maybe time. 2001. Have you ever? Have you ever? Yeah, maybe 2000. I thought that was more Blue Moon. I thought it was like 98. Like Full Moon. It's still um, 20 damn years. <laughs> yeah, regardless. It's <laughs> like we 20, here's, whether here's it's 20, 25. 2000 was like five years ago. Got you wrong. <laughs> like we over here splitting hairs. <laughs> regardless. Eyelashes. I love the fact that we have still been rocking that damn album so hard. Baby. Girl, I said oh, yeah. the boy is my uh, that, that's my album. I fucking love it. The I love it. In disguise. <laughs> that's my shit. Angel hey. in disguise. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, come here. We just we just we just talk about now. We just talking. Right this we're is us. Divas. This is how we are after we done recording. Just so y'all Basically, know. Basically, yeah. Now we just talking to talk at this Ooh, point. Sure is. But uh, community, stay safe out there. Anything else? Oh, we should have said this in the political part. We see now why Elon Musk is buying Twitter. We knew what he was going to do to give old boy his shit back on a political year. They spend the billions to try to disrupt the black and brown communities and the minority communities still. Pay attention. Uh, white people whiten. Just the way Jesse Thang Thang and white people white people. In. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anything else on your hearts and minds before we get out of here? Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs>